Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. We're on air. We're live with Casey and Morgan. No. Woo. Whenever my, whenever my um, what? I was gonna say whenever my whenever I have my sweatshirt like this, I feel like I'm in the '90s, and it makes me makes me really happy. It reminds me of like Kelly Kapowski on Saved by the Bell. Oh. I'm so excited. I'm so, so excited. scared. I'm scared. I was gonna ask you though if it made you wanna do the locomotive. Brand new dance now. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. It's totally fine. We're hilarious. You know why we're hilarious? Q theme music. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say. I was gonna say because we're millennial monologue, and then we're gonna cue theme music. Good times. Also, do you also have the experience? Why am I saying also so much? Um, do you do you have a similar experience where you start to tell somebody, "Hey, you should listen to my podcast," and you're like, "Wait, that sounds so weird." Yeah. Promoting yeah. myself. What? I feel that way every time I post something. It, I mean, especially like as artists, you know, like when I post for my film or something like that, and I'm like, "Hey." pay for me to do this thing that I'm probably going to do for free. Thank you. Right? <laughs> now watch me do this thing that I spent 12 hours on, but it's only 10 minutes long. <laughs> and then you'll ask me all these annoying questions about why do I do what I do and why does it take so long? And I won't have enough time to explain to you why it takes so long. Nope. I'm going to need you to book me for 12 hours and then I'll explain to you. And pay why. me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh. Um, but yeah, hello, we're a Millennial Monologue. Yes, with Casey Lowenthal. And Morgan Humberg. I hope that sounds like a crowd. <laughs> sounds like a <laughs> quiet crying baby, actually. <laughs> or a very scary wind. If only. Oh. <laughs> uh. Hello, all. Yes, welcome. What are we on? Episode six? Damn. It's true. Heard it here first. Episode fucking six. Where do we go from here? I really don't know. I don't either. I feel like it's time to retire. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. We haven't made enough money yet, people. Come on. Let's donate. Um yes. <laughs> Donate to our non-existent page that we have for donations. <laughs> <laughs> or better yet, put your money in a savings account. Let it bear some interest. Then when you've, you've gotten a lot of interest and you've put some money away, then give it to us. Yeah, that would be that would be amazing. You guys would be like totally paying it forward, which is yeah. so and we'll, good right now. We'll be teaching you about how to save your money and build financial wealth and having healthy bank accounts. So really, it's a win-win when you think about it. I mean, you can't argue with that. No, you, you can't. can't. Plus, you need that little extra money for when, you know, we start doing live shows because that's going to happen. Yeah, and um, we're going to try to prevent stampedes, but mm -hmm. people are going to be really excited. And, you know, it's really mostly the venue's fault if stampedes happen, but we won't get into that. This is true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll just leave that be for now. But just, you know, fair warning. You should probably save money because ticket prices are going to rise. Inflation. Inflation. <laughs> Read my fucking mind. <laughs> Anyways, y'all, we would like to welcome you to our episode six of Millennial Monologue. Episode um, six. Have you watched the other five? Or have you listened to the other five? Have you listened to our two squibs and soliloquies? If you haven't, you should. What are you doing? Yeah, you totally, at least you you have time to listen to squibs and soliloquies. I mean, they're short. So, yeah, it's a little little blip. Just teen little, little something, something. Just, <laughs> this little wee little yeah. thing. Just like this. 
just just get a little bit real short. You kind of turn it on and, and <laughs> you get a full story <laughs> after five episodes. We're only at two, so you know you don't even get a full story. Nope. That's it. Just one, two. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> In okay. case you can't tell, Morgan and I are in a little bit of a weird headspace. We could we blame the full moon or the penumbral eclipse that happened. Oh my god, yes, the penumbral eclipse. <laughs> I tried to lean away from the microphone, but I'm sorry if you were listening on headphones and that was very, very loud. Morgan just makes me laugh. I just can't speak words. You know why? Because it's home day. <laughs> what day is it? Hump day! Mike, 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 Mike. What? It's hump day. God damn it. <laughs> I my stapler. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, we are recording on, on this very special middle of the week. We're exhausted, not ready for the next two days, but... Middle of the week and middle of the month. Oh, shit. It's the Ides of January, Morgan. You know what? It is... It's feeling like it. It's feeling... It was 80 <laughs> degrees today. And I'm just saying, it should not be 80 degrees in January in Central Texas. Maybe Southern Texas, but not Central. I think it was like low 40s in Cleveland today. It should be cold. Rain. You should be like freezing your ass off right now. We should have snow. Yes. If you think about it. Yes. But and you don't. You, but it's not because climate change isn't real. We'll get to that later. Yeah, science don't know her. Science is fake. <laughs> fake That's why there's so many degrees in it. That's um, why people have been able to split an atom. Yeah. But. You know what you need to do? You need to go and get a degree in English because it's hard to speak. It, it is. It's really hard. Grammar's hard. Spelling's hard. Words are hard. And John Mulaney has a degree in English. This is true. And he spent very many years, I'm sure, in his car working his way <laughs> to being a comedian. Because that's what you do with an English degree. Yes. Can you get a degree in English? Or, does, or would it have to be like a specific? Like, is no, English a thing? you can get English degrees. Oh, okay. But it's more of like literature or grammar and writing and all that jazz. Do they call it literature because it's hard to say? So you have to have the English degree in order to get all of the dictation in there? Indubitably. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Just kidding. I got a degree in theater. I know words. <laughs> we we say words that other people write. This is true because I write like shit. I can't, can't do it. I don't know how writers do it. You go crazy. Actually, I haven't seen The Shining, but I'm sure it's very similar. Oh, yeah, he only went crazy because he was a writer, not because of a scary haunted hotel in the middle of Colorado and no contact with other people. That or the scary like ghosts. A dream. Mm -hmm. Sounds amazing. <laughs> I'd take some ghosts right now over my neighbors. Um, <laughs> anyways, Casey, I want to tell you about this thing that I saw today on the Facebook. Please tell yeah. me. I'm so excited. I know. I just, I don't know how many millennials still use the Facebook, but it's still out there. It exists. It didn't disappear like MySpace. Um, <laughs> I wonder what happened to Tom. You know, I think he's still there, being everybody's friend. He's can still you, on MySpace? Can you, like, create a MySpace still? I feel like you can, but I think it's something very, very different. I know you have to, like, or I know you can still log into it and that there was, like, this big data crash of... 2000 something I don't know but um anyways Facebook the Facebook um yes. not the movie um so I had some sort of acquaintance and or friend of mine that I must have friended at some point in time post today about how he's looking for a home for his dog um Aww. Yeah, right? And he was like, made some sort of long spiel about how he's in some sort of transitional period. Something about moving. I don't understand how you can't take your dog with you when you move. Well, um, important but not important question because all dogs are sweet baby angels. What kind of yeah. dog is this? Um, It was a husky. Not sure if it's full or, you know, a mix. Not that it matters. But I also know that huskies are hard to put in like rental 
leasing places because they're considered a big aggressive breed. Are they considered aggressive? I think so. I've seen a lot of like apartment applications where they're like included in the list, but it doesn't specifically always say that. So those lists are bogus. They are totes. But um anyways, he was looking for a home for his dog, and so I read through the comments obviously because I had to see who's going to take this precious precious little dog. She was adorable. Um, and, uh, they were asking him all these questions and he's like, well, you know, I'm just, I need, I need a home for her right now just cause I can't take care of her. But the deal is, is that if you take her and you have, or, and she has puppies, then I get one. What? I'm sorry. Can't you not have a dog? Is that, isn't that what we're trying to avoid? Are you just going to put yourself into a cycle of getting a puppy? And then when the puppy proves it has needs you're like oh can't take care of it but if it has a puppy send it my way right i mean even then if you're in some sort of quote transitional period of your life why do you need something that requires 24 7 attention much like a human baby in case (laughs) Mm -hmm. and and it grows to be the same size as the dog that birthed it so what i know right it gets bigger and they require vet visits. Apparently. Lots and lots of food. Mm-hmm. Yep. They consume that too. And a heck ton of time and attention and training. Mm, no, I heard you can just leave them in a box um, and oh. for years. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. So they don't need any sort of attention. They can just be in a box and then come out in public whenever you want, look cute and adorable for your Instagram and never have any personality issues. Sounds like a win-win situation. Right. That's how I got my anxiety-ridden, well, now anxiety-ridden dog. Ringo. You did not keep her in a box. Let's go. Let's let's no. clarify that for everybody no. listening. No, no, Morgan no. Is but... a very good dog owner. <laughs> <laughs> but when we did rescue my Sheltie mix, Ringo, um, he had spent four years of his life outside with a doghouse in Indiana, which, you know, we have summers and winters, and he's a long hair Sheltie, so he has a very thick coat. So he was outside in that 90, 100 degree heat, and all he had for protection was a doghouse. He was chained up, never allowed to go inside. Um, And he had a lot of... He was very, very skittish when we got him. Now he curls up in your lap, but, you know, it's been four years. So, or I'm sorry, it's been seven years. Oh. oh, sorry, Brinko. It's never made sense to me, the people who get a dog and never allow it to come inside their home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not even out of, like, I understand people don't like fur on their stuff. I get it, especially with long hair. But you knew he was going to be furry when you got him. Um, That's so probably sure part of the reason why you picked him. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm sure he was an adorable fluff ball as a puppy. Oh! oh. He would have been so cute. Just a little tiny floof. Just a little floof. Oh, long ass nose, you know, little legs. So cute. Oh, I love puffies. High tinny bark. Yeah, yeah, that would be Ringo. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just don't get it. My One of my family's dogs, one of my family dogs, correct grammar, English, <laughs> Uh, he's a Rottweiler mix, which Rottweilers have my heart forever and ever and ever. Mm. Um, fight me on it. I will win. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I'm in a very odd mood today. Um, I'm going to send Simone after him. I'm going to, Simone's going to fight you. That's what's going to happen. Oh no. My aggressive cat. (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) Um, but He's a Rottweiler mix, and we think he's mixed with a Sharpay. Um, but he's the cutest thing in the whole world. And um, we actually got him 10 years ago earlier this month. Um, so we've had him for 10 years. We think he's probably 11 or 12. Um, not quite sure. We got him through a rescue. And the person who had him, he was just, he's still an erotic mess. Mm-hmm. And I say that with the utmost love in my heart. <laughs> right. Um, and it makes me so, so sad. But when my parents drove to get him and he was from Kentucky, so maybe that explains it. But 
I don't take offense to that because I'm not from Kentucky, but you know, we don't hate. I thought you're gonna call me out on throwing shade on Kentucky for like oh, hell no, you can random sh- people. You can throw as much shade as you want. Take out that umbrella, <laughs> stick it right over Kentucky. <laughs> it's there. Um, yeah. But yeah, so when they went and got him and drove him back, he was just terrified, and he's terrified of men. Mm-hmm. Um especially men with deep voices. So we think he was abused. Um, and it was kind of a similar situation of the people who were giving him away. They said they were getting a divorce and that they couldn't keep him, couldn't have him go live with family or whatever. So they did a rescue and we rescued him and they ended up not getting divorced. Yeah. And they had like three other chihuahuas. Ugh that they already had with him and he's like 70 pounds. So he's, he's tiny for a Rottweiler mix, but um, he's not like a tiny dog, but <laughs> um, I keep losing my train of thought. Um, Meow. Right. But <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, he like didn't want to come anywhere near any of us for like the first couple of weeks that, he was home. He was terrified of everything. And he's still like kind of skittish. But now, especially with my mom and me, he's like our shadow. Me yeah. even more so. Like, <laughs> not to yeah. brag, but this dog and I share a soul connection. Um, but there was a while where I was thinking about moving to Cincinnati, thinking about moving to all these different places. And, um, kind of like you touched on with the aggressive quote unquote aggressive breed lists for many apartment complexes because he's mixed with Rottweiler and it's so obvious so many places wouldn't let me have him and I mean Morgan you have a Doberman you can speak to this too you rent like yeah can we just talk about what bullshit quote unquote aggressive breeds are I mean, it's it's complete bullshit because to be honest, I like Ringo as as a Sheltie is not considered. I mean, he's Sheltie Collie mix, so he's like 50 pounds really, but uh, which makes him a medium sized dog that barely fits an apartment. First of all, most right. of them go like 40 is like a max type, 30 mm-hmm. is preferable. But, I mean, he's, he's snapped before. I mean, I, I would consider that aggressive. Like, not because, you know, he's trying to be aggressive, but that's just what people see is that, like, someone would get rid of him for that. Um, but Xena, as a Doberman, it's been... She's a warrior princess. It's, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm... <laughs> I, I don't want to say that I'm lucky enough to have a, uh, a mental issue to where I can have an ESA. Um... <laughs> But, well, uh, and I think it's important to distinguish the people who abuse it and the people who actually need it and yeah. the people who go through the proper channels. Yes. Yeah. So I, I do have a, a, a note from my doctor, and you can't ask me why because that's not allowed. Well, and technically um, it's a prescription. <laughs> yes. Like that's, that's what they yeah. are. Um, yeah. ESAs really do help people. And just so everyone knows, you you can't take ESAs everywhere. Like they're actually not allowed in grocery stores and um, there's now a weight limit on them for planes. Uh, really the only place that you, you can say that you are allowed to bring your dog there because it's an ESA is in a housing situation where they say they won't accept that breed or weight or whatever. And I, I think, think travel told me also work. Yes. Like work. dependent on the field, obviously. Yeah. Like if you work in food service, not going to fly. No, no. So all of you people who are carrying your ESA chihuahuas around in my grocery store, that's not allowed. And most people don't know that. That's why they don't kick you out. But it's it's not. It's not allowed. Sorry. But I get it because people do have anxiety, like really bad anxiety. I get really bad around crowds. And when I get home, I'm exhausted. And my dog is my secret therapist. But um. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the only reason why I'm able to rent most places that I do is because she's considered an ESA and so they can't discriminate against her. Although I will tell you that even then it is difficult because uh, before we rented our current place, 
they took 24 hours after learning that she was a Doberman to decide um, if they would let me stay. Really? Yeah. And it's not like they came to meet her or anything, you know, because an aggressive breed to me is a dog who growls at somebody who immediately, you know, walks in your vicinity with no warning or whatever. But um, I, I would assume that meeting a dog and deciphering if it was aggressive or not is, you know, better than just saying, oh, it's a Doberman. It's going to attack my face. Right. I mean, I knew people who had a golden retriever and a little kid wandered into their garage. This is like back in the 90s. A little, like one of their little neighbor kids wandered into their garage. Something happened and the dog like attacked the kid. Yep. So it's, it's if they're provoked, Mm -hmm. they're an animal. Like, come on people, they're an animal. And that's one of the ways they communicate, but also like personality traits, the way they're raised, the way they're trained, the way they're socialized. It's no, I get it. Um, uh, Xena actually, I mean, it's true that every breed has its traits or whatever. And, you know, some dogs may be more prone to like chase a cat or something like that just because they have more of a prey drive or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, That's why there are certain breeds that you really shouldn't own cats with. Now that doesn't mean that you can't train it to live with a cat. Right. It's just, it might just take a little bit more to, to train that sort of mindset of this animal is okay. Um, Right. Exactly. And yeah, I guess looping back to the post that started this conversation, getting a dog is a, getting any pet is a giant responsibility. Yes. And you should educate yourself before you do it. That's why anyone who knows me knows how much I'm in love with dogs. That's why I don't have one right now because I'm not in the life situation to where I could responsibly care for one. Everyone jokes about millennials uh, using animals as like, children like we're not having human babies we just have fur babies and I mean they're I won't say that they're just as much responsibility but they kind of are they just have a shorter lifespan so we go through the baby phase faster and we go through the schooling phase faster (laughs) schooling Um, phase (laughs) (laughs) obedient school is no joke (laughs) Um, but (laughs) you know what I mean like it's just it's just it is a lot of responsibility it just the phases are are, are are faster. Like, Zena had a toddler face. Um, she mm-hmm. ate a USB charger, which um, was fun to check her poop for the next couple of days to see where that went. <laughs> By the way, we never saw it come out, so it's probably still in there somewhere. Oh, exciting. Uh, <laughs> but they, they do those things. They put random things in their mouth. They're going to chew on your wood, which I hope your kids don't do, but <laughs> they probably chew on random things. <laughs> yeah. But you should, you're right. You should definitely do your research and figure out what's going to be best for you. What what dog traits would be best for you? If you need something easy to train, they have dogs like that. Or go to a shelter and get a, a loving senior dog who's already trained and they just yeah. they just want to cuddle with you on the couch. Yeah, especially if they're um if they're senior dogs and you're just looking for something to be there. And you don't have any other pets, because I know everyone's like, oh, I don't know about my other pets. Just go get an old dog. Let them live their last few months, few years in a loving home. Well, and also something to remember, any animal shelter worth its salt in anything, if you have another dog, they will arrange a meet and greet before they allow you to adopt the shelter dog. And a lot of them cat test. Yes, that's true. So, God bless those brave little kitties. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm sounding a little bit preachy, so I just want to say I've learned my mistakes, and that's one of the reasons I don't have a puppy, because one of my former roommates got decided to get a puppy, and I helped raise her, and she had me wrapped around her little finger, and mm-hmm. she was my little baby, and I made a lot of mistakes with her, and I've learned from them. But, yeah, yeah. so we're I speaking from experience. <laughs> I haven't learned anything. I create cuddle <laughs> bugs who need love all of the time, um, and I like that. that. Makes- <laughs> That's what I want. I create needy, dependent dogs. That's what I'm good at, who sleep in my bed. <laughs> oh, that's going to be a hard thing not not to let my dog do. Oh, it's but- just, I just, I need that little extra 
heater at, at my feet. That's what I need. That's what I train them for. It's just lay there, <laughs> breathe on my feet all night. Dogs, multifunctional. <laughs> they are. But no, I get it. I mean, it's it's a difficult process because there are like breeds that people look at and they're like, oh my God, I want that. I need that. Um, but honestly, uh, the best dog that I ever had was a mutt, like just a complete mutt. She was like Porter Collie, Manchester Terrier, probably two other things in there. I don't know, but she was adorable. She was obedience trained. She was the fastest damn dog on the agility course. Aww. She lived to be 14. Uh, and she was my absolute best friend, you know, best yeah. dog I ever owned. Came from a shelter. We got her two hours before they were going to euthanize her. <gasps> um, yeah. Yeah. And it, it was I, sweet. I know, right? Well, the way we got her was we like, we saw a puppy online and I was like, that's what I want. And she has markings like a Doberman, you know, and I've always wanted a Doberman. So I was like, it's perfect. Perfect. She looks like a Doberman. That's all I need in life. Yeah. Um, it turns out the photo online was of one of her litter mates and <laughs> her litter mate had like, floppy ears and this cute little like almost button nose and it was like that's that's not the same dog we looked at online because she had <laughs> straight stick up ears and a long ass muzzle and I was like that's the cutest dog I've ever seen and my mom goes that is the ugliest dog I have ever <laughs> seen are you sure you want this one yes. yes yes I was sure and you know what her nickname was garbage gut by the time she died <laughs> but Again, still the best dog I've ever owned. Aww. Um, and I mean, she had she had Border Collie, which was which is always known as a good, you know, trusting breed. And then mm-hmm. she had Manchester Terrier, which is like annoying, yappy, kind of <laughs> digging. Yeah, but they're they're an aggressive small breed when you really think about it. They're kind of assertive. I feel like smaller dogs tend to be meaner and I read somewhere it's especially if people like all the people who carry their chihuahuas everywhere Mm -hmm. the dog can't truly exercise its fight or flight reflex because it can't run away so it's getting trained to just fight whenever it gets scared oh that's what I did with Xena I still carry her at 50 pounds (laughs) just wants to fight all the time um no but I get it actually um Jared went on a jog around our neighborhood a few months ago and was getting chased by a chihuahua. Like he had to jump into the back of somebody's truck just so the dog would leave him alone. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It, it chased him for like a good block or two. Like just, just running. A <laughs> chihuahua. So nobody's safe. No. Um, it just, it just proves that just because a dog is big doesn't mean it's going to eat your face. And just because it's small doesn't mean it's not going to eat your face. Right. Because just... it probably will. <laughs> Sorry. I am a little biased against small dogs. I will say that. When I was little, because my love for Rottweilers comes from my parents. Long story short, my my parents tried to have kids for a long time for like eight years and they thought they couldn't have kids. So my dad got my mom a Rottweiler puppy. No. Yes. And his name was Chester. And so a little bit of a tangent. We'll talk about this in a different episode, I think. But the roundabout, very stressful way that I got my cat. Thanks, Humane Society of Indianapolis. Um, that was sarcastic, except I love him. So thank you. Uh, <laughs> going to say you got something Chester. good out of it. I know. I got the best kitty. Um, but his name is Chester. So when my mom heard his name, she's like, Casey, you have to get him. But so dog Chester was the sweetest thing in the whole wide world. Um, I know now that this is not okay. So please don't come for me. Um, but when I was little, I would ride him around the house like a horse. And when my mom was pregnant with me, she would have to sit on the floor so that this giant 125 pound dog could sit in her lap. No. Like sweetest thing in the whole wide world. And um so like that's where my love of Rottweilers came from. Oh, that's so cute. I don't know where my love of Dobermans came from. We had border collies actually pretty much okay. all growing up. Well, border collie mutts, I should say. Um so herding dogs, but we lived on a farm, so I guess that was our trait. Makes sense. Yeah. Um I don't know. I just like Dobermans because I'd always read about, you know, how loyal they are and how they have so much personality. 
Now I'm realizing they have way too much fucking personality. <laughs> They're basically just a dog version of me, which is no good. You should never <laughs> stick two of me in one place. <laughs> um, that's how I ended up with Xena. You know, I mean, before that, I, I, I will admit, nobody come after me for this. Xena's purebred. And I purchased her on, I would say, the black market of purebred dogs. <laughs> Because I'm a terrible person. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. Um, it's not that I necessarily needed a purebred, I will say. I looked at a lot of the rescues, and the problem was was that I had Ringo, and because and you had a cat? Doberman's... What? And you had a cat. Yes, like, and I had a cat. Thing. And the problem is, is, like everybody else, Dobermans are seen as an aggressive breed, so when people get them, they train them train in quotation marks them to be aggressive and or mean or they you don't you know they don't give them the love they need which is a lot they need a lot of love <laughs> um so they just don't do well with other animals in the house and that's what I was finding on pretty much every rescue site and I was just like I can't I can't take that on like I, I just don't have that so instead I got a puppy which is way more responsibility <laughs> um but she's probably going to be one of the last purebreds that I get unless they're rescued. Um, yeah. But, you know, I did I did it once. Yeah, I that's the hard thing because breeds are bred for a reason and they mm-hmm. tend to have specific traits and like I'm not, like I've said 8 million times I'm in love with Rottweilers, so that's one of the things that I go back and forth on it cuz I I look at Rottweiler rescues way more than I should. It's very masochistic of me. Uh, (laughs) But, like, there are some on there where they're older, they're good with cats, they're good with other dogs, or you'll see a lot, like, the males aren't good with other males, or the females are only good with, like, Mm -hmm. it's a very similar thing of, one, they get so big so fast, people don't know how to socialize them. If you're not yeah. familiar with the breed, like any working dog, if they're not, if they don't have like enough to keep their attention or if you get their energy down or whatever, like they'll be destructive or, yep. like, <laughs> I mean, but also you have to remember like pit bulls and Rottweilers and stuff long, long time ago were used as like nanny dogs to protect children. Yes. So, and, like, the big thing with Rottweilers is I I am all over the place today. I'm so sorry, especially for when you edit this. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, like, another reason why I want a big dog is I'm a petite woman who lives by herself. Mm-hmm. And it's just another added layer of security. And, like, also I love the irony of the idea of me walking down the street with a giant-ass dog. I think that's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> But also, like, protection, and so people won't fuck with me, and I just love them. So it checks all the boxes. But yeah, Rottweilers are known, like, they'll let somebody in the house, but they won't let them leave. Which I think is very interesting. Oh. And... Mine definitely barks before they get in a million <laughs> times. Even if they're just walking by the house, she just barks a million times. <laughs> and then people get scared, and then they, they totally. Just... Leave your packages on the porch and run away. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I want to get a purebred puppy be- or, like, try to find a rescue puppy or – because it's just easier because I have a cat mm-hmm. and all the things. Like, yeah, socializing an older dog is not impossible. No. There's just an added challenge. Right. And that's that's actually my next journey because I've definitely made a lot of mistakes with Zena. Uh, I got her at a time when I shouldn't have because I just didn't have time to put in the right amount of time. She, I mean, she knows how to sit down, whatever, all that. I mean, 11 years of dog training and 4-H should have you know, instilled something of me. So, so she knows She's all the, the basics. basics. Yeah. But the only other dog that she really gets along with is the other dog at my house because I didn't have time to take her to class or the dog park or anything like that. So that's my goal actually this year is to take her out and and try to socialize her. It's going to take a long ass time and I'm going to need a lot of patience and I'm going to have to tell a lot of people to just kind of 
stay away with their dogs because she actually gets along with people really well. I have never yeah. seen her lunge after a person unless they look menacing, which has happened twice. Um, <laughs> yeah. And one time was a guy pulled over while we were walking down the sidewalk and was talking to me and she started growling at him. So good girl, Zena. Trust your dog. Yes. Um, a similar thing happened to me with Dalton, my Rottweiler mix. We also named him Dalton after the Patrick Swayze movie Roadhouse because we thought he'd be bigger. Oh, that's and cute. if you don't get that joke, go watch Roadhouse. <laughs> Roadhouse. Oh. Yes. But yeah, I had a similar thing happen where I was walking him and this guy in a big pickup truck started driving really, really slowly. Mm -hmm. And Dalton was just like, I don't know. I don't know no, about this guy. I don't know. Like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, one of the, th another reason I'm thinking about getting a puppy first is that so I can have like a good, how do I even phrase this? Like, a, <laughs> this is not the, not the phrasing I want to say, but it's the only thing I can come up with. Like a good base dog that's really yeah. calm and level. And um, so then, and other dog, or I adopt other rescue dogs it's good socialization and he can be like a stable source of yeah. training. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're like me and you have Ringo as your first dog who has a lot of issues and then he teaches all these issues to your new dog. And, and now it's instilled in the family line for the rest of my life. Good job. I'm Morgan. Sure that's how it's gonna, I'm sure that's how it's going to be with all my other cats. My cat, my cat <laughs> has some stuff. <laughs> Oh, well, it'll be fine. But I just, like, on the fact of, like, um, her being, like, like she's actually registered. She is AKC. Um, she has a lineage, yada, 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 paperwork, whatever, whatnot. I did register her. I took her to two shows because I thought, you know what? I've got a purebred. She's blue, which is, you know, not liked in the Doberman world. Um, I also did not crop her ears. I didn't have a choice not to crop her tail. It was already, it was already docked. Um, that's a sad thing. Yeah. The, if I get a choice, I'll be like, no, leave yeah. the tail. I had a choice to keep her ears and I did, um, just cause I don't see any purpose to it. I've read a lot and they were like, oh, it's supposed to help her hear better. Let me tell you, this dog can hear somebody walking down the street two miles away <laughs> and I don't need it. I don't need her to hear better than that. That's pretty good for me. <laughs> Um, so there was, there's no excuse there. So she has her, um, natural ears and she also has her dew claws, which, um, usually get taken off purebreds as well. I feel like that's um, less common now. I might totally be making that up, but I feel like it's less common to remove dew claws. It, it is less common to remove them un unless they're purebred. And I've oh, also okay. heard that they can, um... They can be potentially dangerous in a way, but only if, like, they get stuck on something, you know? Like, that's that's they what they told me is the main reason why injury, they remove yeah. them. Yeah. But um, she does still have them. So what, you can bet your ass when I showed up to the show, everyone was like, oh, my God, look at this amateur. Now, mind you, I have also showed showmanship, so I know what I'm doing <laughs> as a handler. But I showed up with, like, my six-month-old puppy, you know, and I'm like, hey... I have a blue Doberman with natural ears and her dew claws. She's so pretty. Let her win. <laughs> she was. Yeah. Yeah. She's adorable. Um, but she's way smaller than she's supposed to be. Yada, yada, yada. Long story short, I got her spayed. Um, because yeah. I'm not going to breed her. She's she's not breed quality. And I don't want her to have puppies. She may yeah. be purebred and I may love her to death and want multiple of her in the future. <laughs> but... It's not right to breed something that just isn't, I don't want to say isn't going to give anything into the world, but I'm not going to get a duplicate of her unless I exactly clone her. Just because she has puppies well, doesn't mean even, I'm going to get her. Even then, it's just a genetic copy. It's not like it would be Xena. Right. right. Wasn't it Barbara yeah. Streisand who cloned her dog? I think so. Yeah. Good old Babs. That's just weird. Yeah, just, I, I mean, you have to think about like, what if you like cloned a person? It's just not. You just, you just shouldn't. It's, it's not the same. That's awkward, Morgan. I was planning on cloning you. Oh God damn it! Don't. It'll probably get like my evil genes, and then <laughs> massacres will happen worldwide. Um, Clone Morgan will kill me in my sleep. Yeah. I, make real Morgan cry. 
clone Morgan will create the purge. Um, <laughs> she'll fight her way to the to the White House and uh, instill some new laws. Um, no, I just feel like that needed to be said. Just because you have a purebred doesn't mean you have to breed it. You can get it spayed. It's not against the law. It, yeah, you can totally do that, and it's actually healthier for the dog to get it spayed um, than to have more puppies. But counterpoint that's also not to say that you should never breed you should just only breed if you have show quality dogs that you're planning to sell at show quality prices and not on the black market (laughs) love you to death xena but (laughs) (laughs) do not sell puppies on the black market if you know they're not good enough to be in a show don't breed them that's just that's just it and don't breed your mutts (laughs) please don't like we understand accidents happen, yes. um, but it's just better for everyone involved. Yeah. Um, it's more cost effective. It yep. uses less resources. Just get your animal spayed and neutered, please. Yes. Please, please. There are so many animals without homes. Again, and- it, it's healthy for them, too. It's very healthy for you to spay your females. Well, and also, if you neuter your males, they'll they have less of that machismo and they (laughs) they may still hump your leg occasionally but probably not as often them getting aggressive as they get older is significantly lowered yeah and i mean it's the same in females even even if you if you don't get her spayed and even if you don't breed her she's gonna at least twice a year probably try and attack your face because females in heat are not something that you mess with yeah it's terrifying it's also something that I something that I didn't really know because I'd only had boy dogs growing up until the puppy that I helped raise and spoil till the end of time. Mm. Um, something I did not realize is that when female dogs are in heat, they bleed. Yes. Yes. So, <laughs> and she would get so sad, and I'd be like, "I'm so sorry, baby. I know what you're going through." <laughs> exactly. <I know. laughs> That's why you and you don't... can't even eat chocolate. <laughs> See, if you don't spay them, then you're just going to suffer with them. You're just going to cry together, watch marathons of romance movies. Um, Bleach your sheets. Just, yeah. It's just, yeah. It's just not good for anybody in the situation. Just No. If it's, I know everyone wants puppies and you want to have your own puppies, yada, yada, yada. Again, there are plenty of puppies Adult dogs, young dogs, elderly dogs in shelters. Well, and also, if you get an older dog, you don't have to potty train them. Do you... Something that's so easy to forget when you're removed from the puppy stage or you haven't done it since you were a kid because Mm -hmm. your parents did everything. In my case, my mom did everything. (laughs) Uh, Like, having a puppy is hard. Potty housebreaking a puppy is hard. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort and a lot of patience. Mm-hmm. Yep. You can, you can, somebody's already done that for a dog in a shelter. I can tell everyone who rents and or leases that I lost my entire deposit on our last house and I had to pay extra because oh. I had a puppy who wasn't potty trained and I owned a carpet cleaner and they still ripped out all the carpet and put in hardwood floors because puppy um but it's hard it's really hard it took me a while and just like a baby you got to get up every hour you got to let it outside make sure that it pees well and something something that's easy to forget because puppies are so fucking cute Mm -hmm. is just how much strict attention they need yeah you have to be very diligent of like take your puppy outside before they eat and then take them outside immediately after they eat every time after they play they have to go outside anytime after they wake up they have to go outside you have Mm -hmm. to look for their patterns you have to like it's Mm -hmm. a lot yep yep we were on a time schedule like Ringo had to adjust his pooping schedule around (laughs) around Xena's puppy schedule (laughs) Oh, <laughs> it's fine. He's old. He's he's used to it. He's he's all right. Yeah. Um, but it's just it's a lot. And uh, I don't know. This is kind of off the path a little bit. But when we were potty training Zena, she was having a hard time like telling us when she needed to go, and she would just go like hide in a corner. 
like after she knew that she needed to go outside, she didn't want to like bother us, I guess. I don't know. Oh. But um so the we hung a bell. She started young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we hung a bell by the door and every time that she needed to go potty, we taught her to like ring the bell. Um which eventually she started ringing the bell about 20,000 times a day because then she knew that she was going to get attention and she got She's... all excited. She's super smart. That's she was very smart. She a learned the I Go think ahead. she learned the bell in like two days. She had it down. She knew what it meant. Okay. And she was like, bell, 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 <laughs> I'm bell. I'm going to use this power. <laughs> she did. And then she got bigger. So then she ripped the bell off the string and we had to figure out a new way to hang it up there. It was just, it was a process. We no longer have a bell. <laughs> <laughs> Moral of the story. We no longer have a bell. She just barks when she really has to go. But um, I just watched a YouTube video of somebody who recently got a puppy and she was talking about how she trained her other dog to do the bell when she had to go outside. Mm -hmm. And then she trained her to use a desk bell. And the watch was so funny. And she was like, I switched to it because it was much funnier. (laughs) So now I want to do that. (laughs) That would be hysterical. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, Anybody here? I have to go outside. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's great. Super great recommend but don't recommend as a permanent solution just just but yeah that's what I was gonna say I think a lot of people take for granted how smart dogs actually are well most Mm -hmm. dogs um a lot of dogs are smart enough to get themselves in a whole bunch of trouble because they get bored (laughs) yep Yep, yep. And even if you, even if they get themselves in trouble and you like yell at them, that's still attention to them. So they know that if they cause trouble, you're going to look at them one way or another. <laughs> Maybe it's not always a smile, but especially if they're a puppy, you're going to look at them and you're going to be like, God damn it, I just love you so much. You're so cute. How can I be mad at the face? And then they're going to get really confused. Yes. And that's how you get an aggressive dog. Dun-dun-dun. Or a very anxious dog. Yes, I have I have both. <laughs> <laughs> just, just just a little bit of both. Just but, a little uh, bit. Yeah, you got to be careful. There honestly, I think I think you have to do a lot less as far as like raising dogs compared to raising kids, but at the same time, you have to train them better. <laughs> You're not going to get what you want. Cuz you can get what you want if you try to. Um mm-hmm. Like, as I was talking earlier on my my best friend of 14 years, uh, her real name was Daphne. And, yes, she was named after Daphne from Scooby-Doo because... <laughs> That's my I favorite was a, thing in the whole world. I was a child. <laughs> um, but anyways, she was god-awful at obedience. Like, agility, we'd rock it. We won pretty much every year at 4-H. And... Um, We've talked about 4-H before. Yes. And I think yeah. episode one. So go back and listen to it. Yeah. To learn what 4-H is. Don't Google it. Just go back and listen to our episode. God damn it. We'll tell you all you need to know. Exactly. Um, but yeah, she, I, she, I used her for eight years in 4-H out of the, the, no, sorry, nine years of 4-H out of the 11 that I was in it. Okay. And um, so she did obedience for nine years. She was pretty much last in obedience every year um there was one year where we were like third to last and i was like yes progress <laughs> out of like 20 dogs and i was so excited <sighs> but like i i knew she wasn't good at it because i had spoiled her so much like sh- she wouldn't do the long sits and stays and she wouldn't let me leave her side and eventually we won obedience our last year <gasps> we won the obedience class it was great I think it might have been because she was so old. Well, she wasn't so old because she still rocked agility, too. She actually, I like sharing this fact. <laughs> she, her last year, she ran agility. She ran, like, the elderly dog course. But um, I had her run the young dog course as well. And she still beat the time of the first place dog that was in the young class. Go Daphne! Right? But we won obedience, I think, because she was so old, she didn't want to get up off the floor. So, (laughs) but it was cute. It was cute. But eventually she won because we spent nine years working on sit, stay, down, stay, stay, please, dear God, stay. Oh, my God, just stay. (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, something I want to do when I get my future puppy, because also one of my goals is to train him as a therapy dog. And like, that's Mm -hmm. another reason why starting from scratch with a puppy is a good thing, because in that kind of situation, you don't know what your dog's triggers are. And if like, God forbid, Mm -hmm. you're in a therapy situation, and a kid does something you don't know about, but I digress. Um, but so I want to train him as a therapy dog in the future. And you actually told me about the, what was it? The good canine citizen test or good. Yeah. The canine good citizen CGC test. Yeah. So maybe you'd like to tell our listeners more about that. Um, so it's a really cool test that I would actually like, um, to get Xena passed on as well, but it basically, it just, um, it's like a little certificate that you can earn the pretty much every single, dog obedience class or whatever um, what do you call a company wherever you can take your dog to go get trained they'll Mm -hmm. probably offer um, training for that and or the test because it's like an actual legitimate test that someone has to watch you do Um, but I think the basics are is that your dog has to know basic obedience they have to be able to sit stay be around other dogs be around other people without showing any signs of of um aggression in any way like there's obviously no growling Um, a stranger has to be able to pet them and you're allowed to be there the whole time which is good because some dogs you know need to make sure that their owner is safe and they can still be good dogs and be needy it's fine like a very effective way to train your dog is to where your dog sees you as the alpha right and there's also there's also the whole thing of, you know, your dog is going to look to you to know how to react to a situation. So if you're scared, then then they're going to know there's a trigger in their mind that says this is not a good situation. Yeah. But if you're happy and you're relaxed, then your dog should also be happy and relaxed. Yes. Um, so, yeah, but it's a really cool test. Um, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily get you anywhere further in life. But should you run into a situation where you have a quote unquote aggressive breed and you're trying to rent somewhere, this it's a test that you could use to say, look, my dog passed all these tests. You know, you can just meet him. Here's a certificate. You know, it's official. He's a good dog. He's a good boy. Yeah, um, good boy. <laughs> good boy. But it's it's a really cool test, and I highly recommend you look into it because it just makes you want to take your dog through that training, through the socialization, and create a fur baby um, social, a social fur baby. A fur baby social. <laughs> fur baby social, where you can invite everybody's fur babies over. And it's okay because everyone's a CGC certified and uh, they get along with each other. So it's all good. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the renting thing again, and it reminded me there was one day I decided to torture myself and went to look at a Rottweiler rescue website. They wouldn't even let you look at the adoptable dogs until you filled out an application, which kind of bummed me out, but was also very smart of them. Yeah. Um, but one of the criteria was you had to be able to prove if you were renting that the dog was allowed to be there. Um, and also if you owned a home, you had to be able to prove that your homeowner's insurance or like also your renter's insurance in that case, your, your insurance covered quote unquote aggressive breeds. And I had never seen that before. I thought that was very interesting. Um, If, God forbid, your dog bites anyone for whatever reason. um, Because they were trying to take your Snickers. Yeah. (laughs) They're trying to take your Eggo waffles. God damn it. Let go my Eggo. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so I found that very interesting. And also, we've talked very little about pit bulls in this episode. But I think they're some of the most discriminated against. Like, Also, something... That I feel like a lot of people don't know. I didn't know this until very recently. Pitbull is a huge umbrella term and like not ac- not accurately used a lot of times. Yeah, because it's not exactly a breed. Yeah. So like American Stafford Staffordshire Terriers. Um, they're so cute and I love them so much. Um, yeah. a lot of people call them pit bulls. Um but yeah, there are I think Denver is a city where pit bulls are not allowed at all in the city limits. Um, And I think it's some crazy law that like three people in the animal control division, if they decide it's a pit bull, 
then it's not allowed. So like any dog with a boxy head or anything like that, like Mm -hmm. it's crazy. And then I haven't really looked into it because I'm not in the place to do that right now, but I read somewhere that in Cleveland, you have to have like a dog license. Yeah. Which I was not very used to coming from a small town. Yeah, they're actually starting to enforce a lot more rules and or regulations around owning dogs, breeding dogs, yada, 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 you know, just which is dumb. It's really dumb and also slightly smart because there are some people who shouldn't own dogs. Yeah. Um, but I think the the re- one of the main reasons why we haven't really brought up uh, pit bulls in this episode is just because they're they're thrown into a group that just shouldn't exist. Um, it's, it's kind of ridiculous to just say that a dog is going to be this way just because it looks a certain way. Yeah. It's ridiculous. That's like saying I should play basketball just because I'm over five foot eight. (laughs) I'm actually too short to play basketball. I feel like all the professional players are like six feet at least. Right. But, you know, you know what I mean? It's just like looking at someone and being like, well, you should do this because you look like this. Mm-hmm. Okay, but no, my parents didn't raise me to know how to handle a basketball. So <laughs> throw me in the water. I know how to swim. That's about it. <sighs> um, but just pit bulls, Dobermans, Rottweilers, Huskies, they just... German Shepherds. German Shepherds especially. I mean, they're, they're the one of the best family dogs I know. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just... It's ridiculous. There shouldn't be such a thing as an aggressive breed. The only thing that I can say that I would be weary about, and it's not technically a breed, but these wolf dog mixes that people are breeding on purpose. That is such a bad idea. Please stop doing that. No. There's a difference between a domesticated dog, which has a certain mindset, and a wolf who is completely animal completely wild you you can't trust it really with other animals you can't trust it with humans you know why because it has a half of one brain and a half of another and you never know what's going to switch on or off you just it's like a ptsd almost switch like just, you don't know yeah it's not, not a good fair idea to breed that animal for its own sake like no it's they're pretty much going to have to go to a sanctuary, which sanctuaries are wonderful things. And I'm so glad they exist yes. for the people who choose to do this and then realize once they're already in it that they can't take care of it. Right. Um, I actually follow a couple, one of those sanctuaries on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just. The, it's that's setting like, them up for failure and it's it's yeah. just wrong. But it's it's honestly, in my mind, the only dog that I see as having any sort of distrust about it I wouldn't even call it aggressive I just I just wouldn't trust it like I would a domestic dog a fully yeah. domestic dog mutt purebred whatever just wouldn't yeah. just... so those are my thoughts all started by a Facebook post yay the Facebook Woo! Um, oh you touched on like and it reminded me of a an independent short film I had seen you touched on like some people just shouldn't own certain types of dogs that are like that people see as aggressive. And so they train them to be like that. Like mm-hmm. that's one of the the bittersweet things I can see with pit bull bands and stuff like that is I would hope that it's in the best interest to like try to cut down on dog fighting. Yeah. But also you're needlessly sending a lot of animals to be euthanized and that's not okay. Mm-mm. Um, I mean, look at all of Michael Vick's dogs that got rehomed and rehabilitated and they're living, they lived amazing lives and PETA wanted to euthanize them all. So that's something to think about. But I saw this really great short film that made me cry. Um, Was it that Sarah McLaughlin commercial? (laughs) No. (laughs) But it's, um, it's about Native Hawaiians and it's set obviously in Hawaii, Jesus, Uh, (laughs) native Hawaiians in Connecticut, (laughs) but they're like, um, the dad's an alcoholic and doesn't really hold down a job. So he 
he uses his daughter's pit bull in dog fighting to like try to get some money and she's like dad you you said that it would just be one fight and he keeps doing it keeps doing it keeps doing it and it even shows like her dog he's like well he keeps winning he's so amazing and but like you could see the dog when he's with her is just like the sweetest thing and doesn't want to do any of that and it just breaks my heart oh my god i'm i'm gonna look up what it is and then we'll post it on instagram um because i think everyone should go watch it it's such a great film even though Casey's already put us all in tears. I'm seriously like thinking about it now. I just, I can't. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm holding it back. Holding it back. Um, But yeah, you're right. It's just, it's, it's how people treat the dog. That's going to show you how the dog is going to turn out. Not again, not to say that rehabilitation isn't possible because contrary to popular belief, you can teach an old dog new tricks, but you have to have the patience to do it. Please mm-hmm. don't, take anything on that you're not ready for because yeah, just the more... go into it educated as much as you can yes the, but the more homes that a dog has the more likely it's not going to be able to fully feel like it's in a good place it's just it's not going to be able to be trained it's not going to feel like it's going to get any love just <sighs> when you get something don't let it go can't but anyways this is a good talk we had a good time i love talking about my dogs yes i love them i'm trying to find that that short film and the only thing that's coming up is the pixar one oh which one also heartbreaking (laughs) just so everyone knows homeward bound makes me cry every damn time my goodness i there, I had gone a long, long time without watching it, and I watched it a few years ago, and it was before they even got lost, Morgan. I was <laughs> sobbing. I was fucking sobbing, and then my roommates were like, are you okay? And I was like, they don't know that, that their humans are going to be back. They think they're abandoned. I, I was know. a fucking wreck. Oh my god. I always, I just completely lose it when the retriever like falls down the mud hole and I'm like (gasps) I know he's gonna make it through but I just... Shadow, come on! Come on, Shadow! Come on, Shadow! That also brings a little full circle. Chance would be considered a pit bull and he's not necessarily a pit bull. Yeah, and he got shot with a porcupine which is sad. (laughs) He kind (laughs) of had it coming. (laughs) He did. He did. But he's just a curious dog. Not yeah. because of his breed. He just a curious puppy who wanted to know what a porcupine smelled like. Um, yeah. It's fine. It happens. I would want to know, too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just talked about Xena for days. Let me go ahead and pull out my wallet so you can see the 20 photos I have of them. Um, <laughs> We're those people who... <laughs> <laughs> like, you want to see a picture of my kid, but it's really like. <laughs> I'm like out okay. at the club screaming, Do you want to see my dog? <laughs> Look at my phone. Yeah. Look how cute they are. That's okay. That's another thing that I want to kind of bring up as a PSA in this. I know dogs are the sweetest little angel babies in the whole world, and all of them are so, so cute. You do not have a right to pet every dog you see. Let me say that again. You do not have the right to pet every dog you see. Always ask first and just ask. Just ask or first. Better yet, wait for the person to offer. Yeah. Yeah. If I can control myself, I know all of you can. <laughs> I can't. I just go up and I poke every dog right in the nose. I'm just like, boop, 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 until my finger's gone. And that's how Morgan lost a hand. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But, I mean, that also kind of circles back to the, you know, you don't know if that dog's in training for anything. Just because it's not wearing a vest doesn't mean you can openly touch it. Yeah. Um, It it might be working through something. It might have just been adopted for all you know. Maybe it's its first walk out. Right. And it makes me sad that because the types of dogs we love are considered aggressive it it's another hurdle to jump like to put on a vest that says please don't pet me Mm -hmm. yeah 
I just want everyone to know that I will probably ask to pet your dog as long as it's over 20 pounds. If it's under 20 pounds, I'm not touching that thing. It can turn into a snake and just bite my face <laughs> off immediately. And I am not appreciative of that. But what about the puppies who are under 20 pounds? No, I don't even want to pet a puppy. What if it pees on me? <laughs> That's just part of the job, Morgan. <laughs> I've been peed on by puppies. I have too. Uh, it's sad days. Um, exhausting days. Just like kids pee on you. Just like human babies pee on you. Uh, um, eh. Except I don't think human babies tear up their diapers with their mouths, but that could be wrong. We don't know. We don't have human babies. This is true. <laughs> what I have is close enough for me for this at this point in my life. But we do want to thank our audience for listening to us talk about our pets, your pets, mm-hmm. the world's pets, future pets, past pets, everybody pets, petting sure pets. Write a book like everybody poops, but everybody pets. <laughs> but make sure you ask first. Yes, That's consent. We're going to put that in the consensual pets yes. <laughs> that sounds like something in like a Kama Sutra or something I don't know um, <laughs> <laughs> what's your safe word <laughs> no but we really do we, um, we'd like to hear from you guys and you, kind of your experiences if you if you have a quote unquote aggressive breed and what kind of issues you run into um just I'm I'm just kind of curious because most people I know Dobermans are considered an aggressive be- breed, but pretty much everyone looks at her and they're like, "Oh my God, she's so cute!" And I'm like, "Yeah, I know, duh." Yeah, <laughs> but um, our my giant ass Rottweilers growing up because I had a few um, at like different points. Kids would come knocking on my door and ask to walk our dog. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, just, it's everybody's. It's, it's a weird world. People are strange. Isn't that a Doris song? Yes. People are strange. When you're a stranger, words and lyrics go right here. Yeah, yeah. But it's just, I just want to know. I want to know. Um, I've never personally owned a pit bull. Um, sometimes Xena has those little spins that pit bulls have, like 24-7. So. If, yes, the zoomies. If you have pit bull videos of them doing zoomies, please, please send them to us because I love watching it. It's so cute. It's my cat does zoomies. It's not cute when a cat does it. They do it because there's a ghost or some sort of paranormal activity making them do weird things or aliens. Yeah, cat, my aliens. My cat does see dead people. Mine does too. That's why she meows like really loud at 3 a.m. Somebody. Some ghost walking around my house. No. Stay but. tuned for our episode on weird cat things. Yes. Um. Anyways, now I want to know. I'm curious to know. But we really do appreciate you guys listening. This is episode fucking six. What? Um, you can find us on Spotify, Anchor.fm, and Apple Podcast. It's a good time. You can also find us on YouTube. Yeah. I mean, you could watch us, but I feel like that's kind of weird. Yeah, that's creepy. And we should get paid for that. Doesn't that make us like cam girls, but like (laughs) clothed cam girls? I don't know. My sweater keeps falling. God, Casey's making us a little racy. We might not be able to post to Instagram anytime soon, but um, we'll try. Nah, but you can also find us on Instagram at the, uh, oh, I'm sorry. It's just at Millennial Monologue Podcast. X nay the the at no, we have monologue the, uh, podcast. What do we not have the the? <laughs> Casey, how do we not know our own podcast name? <laughs> I feel like we had the the, which is just really fun to say over and over again. <laughs> no, we're just at Millennial Monologue Podcast. We have enough okay. letters in there. We don't need the 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 the. <laughs> we're not proper. Um. And I will try to find this very sweet, very sad independent film set in Hawaii. No promises. But we gonna um, try our best. Yeah. So, I guess this is it. This is goodbye. It's the final countdown. countdown. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> 
You guys yeah. are just gonna listen to Casey and I try to harmonize on uh, Skype for a while. That's just <laughs> not happened. total. Yeah. You know, all the audio delays and all that fun stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's gonna happen one day or another. <laughs> or just follow mine and Morgan's karaoke tour. That's bound to happen. Oh my god, what if we had a live show that was called the karaoke tour and we just started out every show with a karaoke song? That would be so fun and all of them are shares if I could turn back time. Yes, because that's the only one I know how to do. Same. (laughs) Especially if I'm not like plastered. Oh, we are not doing a live show not being plastered. That's not the way this works. Except I've drastically cut back my drinking, so I'll have, like, one Long Island iced tea, and you'll have to have, like, a keg. God damn it, <laughs> not, Casey. Not because Morgan's an alcoholic. That sounded very, very bad. She just has a very <laughs> high tolerance, and I'm a fucking lightweight. It's fine. Morgan's a closet alcoholic. I'm sure if I could afford to buy that much alcohol, I probably would. But you know what? I'm broke, and that saves me in sobriety. Woo! Um, anyways... <laughs> All right, we we really appreciate you guys. We love you guys. We want to hear from you. Let us know how you're liking it so far. Yeah, we talk at you. You talk at us. It's a it's a two way yeah. street. Tell well, us you what you talk like at here. us. We'll yell at you. Yeah, yeah, that's what we do. I've also realized how much I just respond to things by yeah, 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 yeah. I heard an echo. No. <laughs> <laughs> technical issues <laughs> um yeah i you know what i think i need to get like a sound mixer and just record every time we have little sing-songy mixes because we could just insert those into the podcast i love it so yeah. much we're just, <laughs> we're just gonna turn into a musical podcast <laughs> well that's why that's why you're like karen from my favorite murder because she sings things yeah, but beautifully she sings well. She also plays guitar. Wish I could do that. I guess I'll have to get Jared in here to play in the background. <laughs> he just sits there like <laughs> just has to play on our cues. Yeah. He can't say anything. <laughs> nope. Just, just sit there and play. And then he has to hold a boom too. Jared, <laughs> I can see the boom. God damn it, Jared, I can see the boom. All right. I think it's gonna do us for today. Love you guys. Follow us, like us, subscribe to us please yes on all the social medias yes sounds good let's do it bye, bye.